Hi there, welcome to the CNCFCI working group call. First one of the year. Hello. Happy to be here. Nice to meet all of you. Hi. Yeah, hi everyone. Hi everyone. Glad to have you. Thanks for joining. We'll get started at about five past the hour, so allowing four more minutes to folks for, to join. If you have any agenda items, please feel free to add them to the Google Doc, and please feel free to add your name as well. All right, great. Looks like we've got about 18 folks on today's CNCFCI working group monthly meeting. A little bit about this meeting, it's held once a month on the fourth Tuesday at 12 noon Pacific time. And this is our first meeting since October due to the holidays. Thanks so much for adding items to the agenda. This should be good. So these meetings are recorded and the recordings are available on the CNCF YouTube channel. And I guess we'll jump right into some upcoming events. I think we're good to have this CI working group call at, on the fourth Tuesday of February, that's the 25th at 12 noon Pacific, as well as March 24th and April 28th. There are, there do not seem to be any conflicts with 
any conferences or, or holidays that I can see. And the next KubeCon, Cloud Native Con, will be in Amsterdam at the end of March, March 31st to April 2nd. The announcement should be uh, public tomorrow. So we'll be able to share that um, after tomorrow. Looking forward to it. And then about four weeks after that will be the Open Networking and Edge Summit in Los Angeles. There's still time to submit a CFP. Those close end of day Monday, February 3rd. And then the announcement for ONES will be announced on Thursday, March 5th. Accompanying these notes is a shared slide deck, which you're welcome to drop in your slides if you'd like. Otherwise, I can unshare my screen and um, Love to see a demo on Litmus to see chaos engineering and CI pipelines. Uma, are you here on the call? Uh, yes, I am. Hi, thank you so much. All right, let me go and share my screen. All right, hopefully you can see my screen. Yes. Awesome. Hello, uh, my name is uh, Uma Mukara, and uh, thank you for providing us an opportunity to present Litmus uh, here at uh, the Scope Group uh, Working Group, as well as um, to talk a little bit more about how Litmus um, it can be helpful in adding some new functionality into the CNCF CI pipelines. Um, uh, themselves, right? And uh, I'm here with a couple of my colleagues. So we will do this in two parts. Uh, first, I'm going to introduce um, the project and the technology and uh, how uh, we think it will be helpful to this group. Uh, and then my colleague uh, Raj and probably Kartik as well will do a quick demo of um, one of the pipelines that uh, they were able to build. And probably I think it's going to be a recorded demo because to run a pipeline, it's going to take about uh, 20 minutes or more. I'm sure we don't have that much time in this meeting. So I will probably take about 10, 15 minutes to uh, skim through the slides pretty quick and then Raj will take about 10 more minutes. With that, uh, let me talk a little bit about myself. Uh, I'm a co-founder and a CEO at MyData, with a cloud uh, Native data management company uh, for Kubernetes. And uh, I'm a co creator of the following open source projects OpenEBS, which is a cloud uh, native storage uh, container attached storage for Kubernetes. Litmus is specifically of interest here. It's chaos engineering um, uh, tool set for Kubernetes that will be helpful in both CA pipelines as well as uh, for doing uh, chaos engineering in production. And then Cubemo is another project that is a, a cross cloud control plane for data movement across Kubernetes. As you can see, we're all about uh, data management on Kubernetes. And that's what um, led us to create these three projects. And uh, we're a team of about 50 people. Um, specifically, here, I want to talk quickly about you know, what led us to create. Uh, uh, litmus uh, in the first place and then we embraced uh, chaos engineering in a cloud native way and then um, I will quickly talk about what are those principles of uh, cloud native chaos engineering and then you know, quick use cases I'll talk about uh, what's litmus like is today and then um, I'll probably introduce uh, an exciting concept uh, called chaos hub uh, very similar to operator hub but it is for chaos templates of various applications um, and then we can see you know an example of chaos hub then uh, uh, we have some proposals uh, which we shared with uh, some of you uh, during the last KubeCon, uh, which were received um, very um, uh, enthusiastically thank you for that and then we were asked to 
uh, talk here and uh, you know probably uh, do a demo so happy to report that we were able to um, clone cross cloud ca project and then uh, implement litmus uh, as a, a reference implementation of chaos into core dns uh, which is what we'll be doing the demo oh. so genesis is uh, it really started about 18 months or a little more and then that where we wanted to start building chaos pipelines for this open source project called open ebs which is our first uh, open source project, uh, which was sponsored. And now it is a sandbox, sandbox project inside the CNCF itself. So at that time, our idea was we need to be able to convince the community that uh, this project is well tested, right? And we want to be able to uh, show them that there is a lot of negative test cases that were run and ETE end-to-end tests were run in a very complete manner. And we want to be able to give the community an opportunity to run those tests themselves. Then we started looking at you know what chaos tools are available on Kubernetes to run those tests for an application like OpenEBS. And we started looking, and then obviously Kubernetes itself is you know coming up. Uh, the tool sets around them are relatively better now, but looking at two years ago, you know you need to build the tool sets yourself. So we started building um, the actual E2E tests uh, in a Kubernetes native way, which means that you know we were started writing them as jobs, and then um, we did them for open ideas. But soon we realized we need to run the same jobs for other applications on Kubernetes as well, because open ideas is a storage underneath those applications. So then we realized, you know, this chaos uh, engineering is a need for all of these applications and then this infrastructure, we should really uh, open up to a larger community and it can become a project in itself and a community can be built around that. So then we announced a Litmus project in the KubeCon 2018 um, in Europe. And now we are almost uh, two years from there. And uh, we recently did uh, 1.0 release of Valetness as well. So uh, in the process, we defined a real chaos in infrastructure architecture. And then we also started a chaos hub, which is really the central piece for community to come together to build uh, chaos experiments around various applications for Kubernetes that run on Kubernetes. So, that's really uh, the genesis and let me actually uh, define what's cloud native chaos engineering we all know what is chaos engineering it's about you know build back things on purpose uh, to increase the resiliency if that is what is chaos engineering and what is cloud native is really doing the chaos engineering in cloud native environments in a cloud native way or in a kubernetes native way so this uh, specific topic is about chaos engineering for kubernetes or for applications that run around kubernetes infrastructure right and um, the environments uh, why this is very important uh, i took a slide from dan uh, in one of the uh, gitlab conferences where he talked about uh, the mix of the software if you look at uh, the cloud and a native stack you have your 50,000 lines of code, but it's really sitting on top of a very dynamic environment for Linux, and uh, which could be more stable, which is more stable than um, any other piece in the current stack because uh, it's been around for a long time. But looking at Kubernetes, there are a lot of churn going on, and uh, it's a huge code base. And uh, there are applications that run on um, this, uh, Kubernetes, um, which are actually running as microservices, which means that they come as very, very often as an update, right? And then there are lines. So if you look at this entire thing, your code that you are really bothered about is really less than 1%, right? A lot of churn that's going on uh, underneath. So how can you really define the resilience or quality of that, right? So CA pipelines are important. What uh, CI pipelines you run in some environment, but you run in uh, production in a total different way, right? Uh, it could be changing. 
So the real answer um, to that uh, is uh, chaos engineering, right? You, when your environment is very dynamic and uh, you need to continuously validate the answer to um, keeping your system in a resilient way is doing chaos engineering, right? So that's, that's how the big difference is. But for uh, cloud native chaos engineering, you need to have one specific thing that whatever you do, you need to do it in a GitOps model, right? You need to have your ML manifest so that you manage chaos also as a way you manage, uh, similar to the way you manage other applications, right? Where you define the ML spec, you do kubectl apply and things happen, right? Somebody's watching for that ML and the operator comes and does its job. So you, that's exactly what is cloud native chaos engineering is. Right. So another way, uh, if you do chaos engineering with YAML files, that uh, with YAML engineering, it's really called cloud native chaos engineering. Right. Um, so what do we need for regular development? You have the spec defined by Kubernetes, uh, and then including some CRDs. But for chaos testing or chaos engineering, you need some chaos resources. Right. New CRDs. That's what uh, we started developing or defining. Right, so and in that process, uh, what we defined was we defined some CRDs and we defined an operator developed uh, and stabilized it and also built some chaos methods around it so that you can actually go and see, I did some chaos, what's happening, right? And can I put some perspective of the results of the chaos over a period of time, right? And uh, that's, that's, uh, that is a set of chaos resources uh, that we really built and we call it as cloud native chaos engineering. So to summarize the principles of cloud native chaos engineering, uh, it has to be open source because you know, anything that's cloud native in general is built around uh, you know, CNCF and which means it's, it's open source, Apache 2 license, et cetera, et cetera. And then you need to have very uh, generic APIs, which are commonly accepted, uh, which means that you know it needs to be built around the uh, community. And then you do not want to be saying, this is how uh, a particular project should not say, this is how you exactly do chaos, right? So the chaos itself should be pluggable, right? You can fill a pod, maybe I can fill it differently, right? So somebody else can write a binary or a library of their own and plug it into this infrastructure and then do the chaos their own way. So it should be pluggable and then it should be community driven. That is because you know it the APIs need to be uh, become more robust over a period of time because community is driving it, right? And the roadmap also need to be uh, driven by the community. So these are the principles uh, of uh, cloud native chaos engineering. And Litmus really follows all of that. Uh, and then I've written even a blog that's published on CNCF. We just talk a little bit more details for this. And um, with that, let me talk about Litmus. Um, Litmus really uh, started about uh, two years ago. We got some good contributors uh, in the early days. And then after we opened up Chaos Hub, we're really seeing some uh, core contributions coming in our way with defining new experiments, et cetera. And there was about uh, 600 uh, stars all over, uh, coming from various geographies. Uh, some of the popular uh, chaos uh, stars on the planet are liking our project. And it's on the CNC of landscape. And then there's a blog about it. And uh, just one more point that I forgot to add here is uh, last, uh, few weeks ago, uh, on the 15th of January, Litmus went 1.0. And that really means that the API set is stable. There is reference implementations. We ourselves use Litmus day in, day out. We, when I say we, the open EDIS community. Um, so there is a good amount of usage for Litmus to say that you know it is stable enough. And uh, it can be used uh, in various other uh, projects uh, and chaos how can be expanded on this uh, set of APIs. So the typical use cases for litmus are start negative testing for your applications and CI pipelines. That's how you need litmus. That's the first use case. Any application starts, uh, the testing of the application starts in CI pipelines and then you need to do some negative testing 
and then you need you need not build the entire negative test cases yourself somebody could have built that for you and you can just pull it and use it just like there's a docker image you pull and then run the application you can pull uh, a chaos experiment and run it right so that's in ca pipelines and um, one more thing that happens is uh, the stage testing or uat before going people want to make sure that hey my deployments are good and as you would have seen it's only one percent of the code is what you own and how do you actually do the stage testing so you need you know a, a way to do a lot of negative testing uh, and that then you can use litmus there and then one of the other major areas where we are seeing um, litmus is kubernetes itself is a good because you know i'm running a lot of uh, very big applications on kubernetes uh, set of applications but Kubernetes itself need to be upgraded quite often. It's not a Linux kernel. Um, I might need to upgrade once in six months, if not, uh, you know, more often than that. So how do you actually do pipelines in pipelines, right? So I want to make sure that Kubernetes itself is good. So you can run Kubernetes set of test cases and make sure that this Kubernetes is certified for a given set of applications. Now in your real production, you can upgrade Kubernetes. And of course, the last use case is chaos in production itself. So for this presentation, I think we are going to concentrate a little bit more on how we can do chaos in pipelines. And because CNCFCI is really about, uh, it's a project that defines the CI pipelines for all the CNCF projects. So how can you improve uh, the resiliency or credibility of those pipelines by adding chaos staging? for each of those projects, right? So Litmus is cloud native, uh, I just mentioned uh, as a repeated way, you know, it's it's open source, it has pluggable chaos because it's not just Litmus libraries it has. Uh, it also included two other well-known um, chaos libraries. One is Powerful Seal, uh, which is from Bloomberg, and the other one is Pumba. Uh, you might have heard about uh, uh, Pumba is a chaos tool uh, used for introducing network latencies, etc. So right now, Litmus is a chaos infrastructure embraces three different sets of chaos libraries. It's got uh, the CRDs, and it's got a way to uh, for the community to contribute various experiments and then get the experiments. Right. Um, it is cloud native. I'll probably skip, and these are the different uh, CRDs. Um, Chaos uh, Engine is a way you can tag your application following on my Chaos experiments. Chaos experiments are the actual experiments with the logic of, you know, action to kill something. And then Chaos Result is a CRD that actually uh, encompasses all the results. And then you will have multiple Chaos experiments in a given, uh, for a given application of Chaos Engine. And then it's got pluggable chaos. Like I said, we have our own libraries. In addition, we have a few more. And then you can have one more library if you want. Um, or most likely, you will have enough uh, experiments that you can just add. And you might need to add more experiments rather than more libraries itself. Right. So it, as an example, powerful seal, this is how we built it. We just built a Docker image out of a powerful seal chaos. And then we created an experiment, uh, and then uh, we set up chaos lib uh, library uh, to point to the powerful set. So it's very simple to plug chaos. And um, then you have chaos hub, uh, which is really uh, the most user centric piece of Hitmus is chaos hub. And you will have a bunch of experiments in a given place, uh, which I'll talk in a little bit. And then what developers do is after they develop an experiment, if they want those experiments to be used once their application is shipped in production uh, by the users, they can push them into Chaos Hub and SRE. So their users, whoever is using that application, can pull those experiments from Chaos Hub and then run them in production. Or they may be running their own pipelines before pushing them into production, before doing the CD, so they can use this um, experiments to run those um, uh, pipelines. Uh, and this is how cloud native architecture looks like. It's got some uh, experiments, and then there are some libraries, 
and you will have some CRDs. So this is how users uh, uh, interact and developers will interact freely by developing the applications. So that's a quick uh, look at this one and how do you start Litmus, uh, start using is you already have a chaos hub with a set of experiments, you have your app running and it's pretty simple to use Litmus. Uh, or you can use either a Helm chart or a, a YAML file to apply, um, to install Litmus that installs uh, the libraries and an operator. And uh, then you can pull whatever the charts that you want. You may not want all the charts because there are plenty of them. Um, and then whatever the charts you want, you pull them onto your Kubernetes cluster. And then you inject chaos by creating a new chaos engine CR. And once you uh, create that CR, chaos operator picks it up, introduces that chaos on that given application, and um, it creates another CR called chaos result, and you can go and see what has happened. And then you have chaos exporter uh, metrics, it's a metric exporter which you can use uh, to really put some time series based metrics into perspective and say, hey, this application was working well uh, all the time, but now there are some issues that are observed when uh, a particular service or chaos is introduced. So you can get some analytics out of it and make sense what has gone wrong and you can take corrective action. So that's how Litmus really works, right? And for, it is developer friendly because it is just like, you know, like a developer creates a pod or other resources, you will inject chaos as well. So injecting a chaos is create a set of YAML spec. Uh, I mean, the CR is chaos engine, and then you create uh, other, uh, you, you specify which experiments you want, and then you run it, uh, it gets executed, and then they get the result. It's it's a completely Kubernetes Kubernetes uh, way. Uh, however, you do your object creations, you do your chaos creation as well. So this is how Chaos Hub looks like. Uh, it is uh, defined as um, it's split into multiple charts. The charts are generic or application specific. As you can see, that there is generic chaos, and then there are multiple applications. And OpenABS is one of the first applications. And then we have somebody contributing Kafka. And uh, for the purpose of this um, demo, we actually created new chaos for CodeNS. And then there are more uh, applications that are in pipeline that are coming. So we hope to see more applications coming in onto this hub pretty soon. So how does the generic uh, um, experience look like what they are right now? We have pod delayed, container kill, we can introduce CPU hardware at a pod level, network latency at a pod level, network loss, network packet corruption. And at node level, you can introduce node CPU hub, you can fill a node, disk loss, disk fill. As you can see that these are all already available. And then you can create uh, a good effect of a particular sequence of attacks uh, using all this and then see how your application can behave. And uh, if you want to even more um, simpler automation, you can take applications. And uh, how you do that is you have to, uh, an application is really defined about, um, there's a pod um, and then there's a service and there is some data. So you can actually create some logic and, um, by creating a new CR, put some new pre-checks on how the application should behave and then you induce some actual experiment and then you introduce some new post checks that becomes your application specific experiment you can write your own experiment push them onto chaos hub so that users need not do all these things whatever you have already done and then that can be used as a new cr itself that becomes an application specific chaos experiment on the hub itself okay for example Open EBS, right? Open EBS is uh, a complex application, uh, which is of course very simple to deploy, but it's got various components. And it's not just about, you know, killing a pod and then seeing how Open EBS is working. The logic is more complex. So for example, you have so many specific applications that are really uh, talking in the language of the application. For example, I want to kill a target. 
of open ABS. What happens? Is everything happening as per my expectation? Or in Excel replica, what happens, right? Underneath, you'll be doing some Kubernetes resource skill, but the logic that you write above and below is, you know, you are really going and verifying the application, not Kubernetes resource. So that's how uh, application specific experiments comes in. So the proposal that we have is as just like we are using litmus in our pipelines, why can't other Kubernetes CNCF projects use litmus for doing end-to-end uh, -end testing, right? So um, it's really as simple as that. Start using um, litmus for it should be fairly simple. Uh, for example, for code DNS, it took about two weeks, but most of the time was about understanding cross load CI and not really about you know writing an experiment. So anybody with a good understanding of the pipeline and uh, um, you know reasonable knowledge of uh, litmus, you should be able to do it uh, in a fairly quick manner about a week or so. Right. Um, they're easy to use uh, chaos experiments uh, for Kubernetes uh, already, and then for DNS we added, and more can be easily developed with help from respective teams. We think the project team should come forward because they know their applications best. So the applications such as uh, you know um, Envoy, Prometheus, Vitus, and etcd uh, should be uh, we should be able to help these teams develop experiments uh, based on litmus and add them as chaos stages into CNCF. And to begin with, at least, you know, Kubernetes itself has a lot of uh, experiments that we ourselves have defined. So Kubernetes e 2 tests can be added um, um, into, into the pipelines. So uh, with that, I would like to see if there are any questions before I pass on the control to my colleague Raj for a demo. All right. It's a very good intro. Thank you so much. Awesome. So Raj, I'm going to just uh, share, stop sharing. Um, I guess yep. let me ask real quick on the the hub itself is that configurable um can you self host charts somewhere if you're talking about say network functions I think was mentioned early on or network services that could be used <clears throat> and you want to be able to test that in the stack so thinking about that um if you look at say telecom operators and uh, they may want to <laughs> run their own images and and have more control over what's uh, there yeah so would it be possible to have um run your own chart hub for the chaos test yes absolutely it is possible um you can the hub itself is uh, i mean the code itself is open sourced so you can clone the hub and set it up uh, probably mm -hmm. a documentation is missing around how to set it up I'll take that as a note, um, okay. but it is uh, very easy to set it up. Uh, you can have your own hub uh, and then you can even set up some synchronization um, to the upstream. Yeah, it's, it's very much possible. Uh, thanks, Uma. Uh, so is, uh, is there any, any question? Is there any question? Thanks, Taylor. That was a great question. And it prompts us to add a documentation around that. So I'll, I'll create an issue and hopefully somebody picks up and adds a note on how to do that. Uh, yeah, thanks, Uma. Uh, thanks for the introduction to Litmus. Uh, hi, guys. My name is uh, Raj Babu Das. I'm a Kiosk engineer at Litmus project. Uh, so uh, as we had earlier discussion in the Slack channel that we are trying to at a kiosk stage in the code DNS pipeline. So my talk uh, will be related to that thing. Uh, uh, we chose one project from the CI dashboard uh, that is code DNS. Uh, so I will explain the workflow and uh, I will explain uh, how we can integrate the litmus to the pipeline. So as you can see my block diagram, 
So here, uh, as we know, uh, whenever developer commits uh, to the source management, source code management, it goes to GitHub or GitLab where we can trigger pipeline. So uh, this is the pipeline of code DNS. Uh, uh, currently, we have uh, uh, two stages, as I can see. The first one is the build stage, and the second one is the package stage. So in build stage, what we do is uh, uh, I saw from the code that uh, it uh, build the source code and upload the artifacts, uh, which will be used uh, by the packaging stage. And uh, in packaging stage, uh, what we are doing is uh, the just building and pushes to the Docker Hub. So after that, after this stage, uh, here the test stage will be uh, available. Uh, in test stage, we have multiple jobs. So in uh, in this stage, uh, we are using Litmus. So in Litmus, uh, for, uh, we have an experiment called uh, pod delete, code in this pod delete experiment. So this is the workflow of the experiment. In uh, first, we create one cluster, Kubernetes cluster that is called uh, Kubernetes in Docker cluster, uh, where we install Litmus and all operators and CRDs. And the main functionality is this part. Uh, this is uh, uh, this will replace the kind cluster code DNS image with the latest build, which is uh, pushed to the Docker Hub, and test this latest image and its functionality. Uh, just like uh, we install the code DNS pod delete experiment and run the experiments, and uh, based on the experiment pass or fail, the build will be decided to fail or pass. So this will uh, the workflow. I will explain a little bit more on the exper uh, experiment uh, on the latest session. Uh, moving forward, uh, we have a pipeline. Uh, so I try to clone the pipeline. Uh, so I clone from the code in this configuration. Earlier we have uh, three stages. Uh, first one is build, as I told, and second one is package, and third uh, I made uh, is the test stage. So I will explain the code and I will show you some demo of the code uh, later on the session. So moving forward, the, uh, so uh, these are the earlier build pipelines. So it took around 9 to 10 minutes to build. Yeah, this is uh, a swim lane activity diagram of code in a spot delete experiment. Uh, here we have three lanes. Uh, first one, first lane is called the user lane. Second one is uh, Litmus kiosk lane, and third one is the code DNS application lane. So uh, in the first lane, uh, first user will install the code DNS experiment. Based on the checks, uh, if Litmus is not installed, it will be uh, tell the uh, it will be show an error or pop up. But then another, uh, if it is successful, then uh, we have to annotate the code in this deployment to be used by the litmus operator and after that uh, we have the main component called kiosk engine so uh, i'll show you a kiosk engine spec how it looks uh, so uh, now on creation of the kiosk engine it will automatically uh, create one runner pod so the runner pod uh, what it uh, does is it will create one uh, experiment pod which is a code in a spot uh, job uh, so this is the pre kiosk and post kiosk checks. Uh, as we know, the code DNS main functionality is to service resolution. So what uh, it will check is uh, it will create one nginx pod, and another pod will liveness pod. The liveness pod will uh, recursively checking this nginx service. If uh, it is failed, uh, then it will show uh, in the logs, and if uh, all things are up and good, then it will be running. There is one demo uh, in coming session uh, so i'll show you a demo how to inject the kiosk on code dns so based on the code dns pod we have uh, uh, two libraries as i'm already told uh, first one is the litmus library and second one is, is the powerful seal uh, which is uh, brought us by bloomberg uh, so it will uh, kill uh, one of the replicas of the code dns deployment and based on the result uh, it will uh, uh, it will save on a kiosk result uh, custom resource uh, the result may be pass or fail so this is the activity diagram 
Uh, moving forward, uh, we have a demo of killing a pod of code DNS. So as Uma already told uh, uh, that uh, this is a uh, chart hub, uh, uh, a kiosk chart uh, similar to the operator hub. Uh, we have around 19 charts. Uh, so you can see that there are different application code DNS, Kafka, OpenEVS and around 19 experiments are there. So we have to install the litmus operator and CIDs. After installation, I check the status of the litmus operator. Then the CIDs. So we are going to install this experiment. So currently we are having only one experiment uh, that is called pod delete. Uh, we are also planning to add a few more experiment of pod DNS. Uh, so I install all the uh, experiment of pod DNS. That is only one. So I already installed, that's why it is showing already exist. I'm going to apply. Uh, if you uh, get kiosk experiment in the cube system, uh, cube system namespace, then you will get one uh, code in this experiment, which uh, I created 16 minutes ago before the recording. So, uh, every experiment is run based on the uh, service account. Uh, service account have the permissions. So before going to service account, we have to annotate the application. We use by the litmus operator. So if you uh, see the service account spec, uh, we have uh, uh, the service account name is code DNS SA. Uh, here I give uh, around six resource permission, which is necessary to run the experiment. And they will have some actions like create delete list. And I bind with the cluster role. I apply the RBAC and if you see uh, the kiosk engine, this is the main component of the litmus. Uh, here uh, you can see we have uh, many information of the application like uh, by default, uh, uh, by default, uh, code DNS uh, have a label called kts hyphen app equals to cube hyphen DNS. So we put this app label and it is under the cube system namespace and app kind is deployment always. So uh, in the kiosk type, uh, currently we are supporting two kiosk type. One is the application level kiosk and another one is infrastructure level kiosk. So we classify uh, this experiment uh, under the infrastructure level kiosk. So I put the kiosk type as a infrastructure level. So here you can see that service account name. So I earlier created the service account uh, code DNS essay. I'm using this in this spec. So these are some uh, two tunables. Uh, by default, uh, uh, it is all, it is all optional, but uh, you can add your kiosk duration that how much time you want to inject the kiosk. And second one is the kiosk interval. Suppose you have two pods, just like in code DNS. First, the time interval between the first pod uh, killing and second pod killing is the kiosk interval. And the rest of the things are optional. So if you see uh, yeah, the service account name, code DNS essay. So I'm applying the kiosk engine. So immediately it create one pod called Nginx, uh, engine code DNS runner, which will automatically create as uh, in the uh, flow diagram. I show you that. Uh, 
creating your engine uh, runner pod it will create one job so it is creating an a uh, job so uh, it will create two more pod which is uh, the nginx pod and the liveness pod the liveness pod will recursively check the nginx service so as you can see that two pod had uh, have been created uh, liveness app and the nginx app if you log the liveness pod you can see and uh, yeah we can also see that uh, the pod is terminating 6 seconds ago first pod goes down and waiting for the second pod it depends on the qos interval yeah second pod also goes down uh, you can see here that uh, it is uh, liveness is failed because uh, it failed uh, to curl the nginx service so uh, if you don't want this uh, error so you have uh, you make sure that you have sufficient amount of replicas of that deployment that is what uh, qos engineering so we check the resiliency of the code in a application and one more thing i uh, forgot to mention uh, this all things are done in minikube so you can do in the gcp also or your kubernetes clusters so after the job uh, completion uh, it automatically delete all the external uh, application it created so you can see uh, the liveness app is terminating uh, uh first checking the result uh, you can check in the qos engine you can describe the qos engine a little bit typo yeah uh, here you can see that uh, the pass yeah quick uh, hi quick time check uh, raj yeah yeah um we may have maybe a minute here quickly to have do we have any questions um regarding litness before we move on to one of the other topics thank you uh, everyone for giving us an opportunity probably we'll talk on the channel on how we can um, uh, take more feedback on this and if there's a need uh, to get this into one of these pipelines like kubernetes or codeinus thank you again lucina denver uh, watson for encouraging us to be here thank you so much for your time and definitely interested in seeing more of this and um on some other initiatives including the cnf test bed is coming to mind and there's a lot of other things happening where we need chaos testing and improve the resiliency so thank you awesome. yeah thank you uh, everyone uh, so uh, if any question from the community i'm stop sharing my slides thanks so much All right. Um I think uh Patty uh you are next if you're available to talk about the CDF SIG interoperability or SIG interoperability. Yeah, yeah it will be quick just a uh, summary and that uh, find more information. Thanks for uh giving me a chance to talk about it. I I put I updated the slide on the deck so you can, if one of you can share this slide yeah so it's basically as i said it's just a short update so cdf is a relatively young community uh, foundation which was uh, founded around february 2019 so it's nearly one year old and the purpose of continuous delivery foundation is to bring different uh, continuous delivery continuous delivery projects together with users to work on ci cd in a collaborative manner and provide mutual platform and uh it has many members which you can check from their website to see who they are 
and as some of you might already face the challenges when you look at the different CI/CD tools and technologies out there and if you intend to move from one tool to another you might have faced that the things are not really uh, streamlined between these tools and technologies and apart from streamlining them they can't interoperate together so CDF governing board came up with nine strategic goals around uh, Q2 last year and one of those goals was to work on tool interoperability. And based on this feedback and based on our own learnings from the communities we are working with or from our employers, companies, we said maybe we should go and propose a special interest group for interoperability to bring users and projects together to work on this important area. And based on those discussions, we proposed the formation of this SIG to CDF talk and about two weeks ago the formation of the SIG was approved by the technical oversight committee so as I summarized this SIG aims to bring users and projects together to collaborate on CICD on interoperability area because CICD if you look at it it is so vast and it is nearly impossible to tackle all the challenges in one group so that's why we went ahead and created this group to work on interoperability aspects of CICD landscape domain. And we have uh, representatives from various companies in this uh, SIG, such as Netflix, Google, Ericsson, Volcop, China Mobile, Cloud, Beast, GitLab, and Puppet, and Lumina Networks. Apart from the company representatives, we have representatives from various projects like Jenkins. I'm sure all of you either use it or heard it about it. Jenkins X, Spinnaker, Tecton, and also CNCF Cross Cloud CI also takes part in these conversations to, you know, work on these whatever challenges we see, whatever ideas we have, share them with the rest of the participants of the SIG. And the way SIGs work is basically you come together with the people and you just start talking about the problems, the ideas, the possible solutions with other people, and then perhaps form some work streams to even minimize the problem domain and identify the questions and work with those things, perhaps ending up with some kind of de facto standard or at least call for action for broader participation. And to enable that, we, as the SIG meets every second week, every evening week on Thursdays, at 3 p.m. UTC, and we just talk about these things. And our first meeting was last Thursday. And the first thing we start working on is simply documenting the vocabulary we are using, or these tools are using, so we can at least identify or come up with some shared vocabulary to call, communicate across humans. So that is one of the first things we start doing. And there are other ideas like pipeline standardization, event driven CI, CD, maybe event standardization and so on. And that work will hopefully start soon. And if any of you is interested to at least look at what we are doing or come and contribute to this work, you can just look at our repository on GitHub under CDF and just add your name under members send a pull request, comment on existing pull requests, share a document which you might have put your ideas on and just talk with other people. So that's all just if you want to collaborate on this area just come and join us and thank you for cross Cloud CI team for joining to this effort since we have been talking about this for years and perhaps this is our chance to do some good work in this area. So that's all. Thank you. Excited to see where it goes. Um, does anyone have any questions or comments about the new SIG or anything related? I have one question. Will there be any events with this SIG at KubeCon Europe? Uh, uh, CDF is arranging day zero uh, event called Continuous Delivery Summit and it's in the planning phase now. The full day event with talks will happen during that day, Monday. 
and we have plans to submit talk about giving updates with the work we are doing under SIG and we also plan to have some kind of get together there, find a coffee machine and stand around it and just talk about this stuff and perhaps have dinner and continue talking. So just if you want to keep yourself up to date with what's happening and this type of information, you can subscribe to mail lists, both CDF Technical or Site Committee mail list and SIG mail list. I can put the links on the slide. Already, well. thank you. Yeah, thanks. Does anyone have any other questions? All right, just got a few more minutes. Um, let me ask uh, Watson and Denver on, I believe are on this next one, for CI on the CNF testbed. With only two minutes left, is that enough time or do we need to defer this until next month? I'm fine with deferring it if you want. Oh, is it four minutes? My um, clock is let's... Oh, my clock is fast. <laughs> All right. Oh, okay. You have four minutes. Well, I'll give it to you, and then if we need to continue, then we can do it next. Do you want to take the over screen. the screen? Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. All right, so this is a review of the CI uh, for the CNF testbed. If you're not familiar with the CNF testbed, you can get there at the GitHub CNCF uh, CNF testbed. Um, it's a project that um, has a bunch of different use cases for networking uh, functions uh, for Kubernetes, and it tries to solve um, problems or test different uh, technology within that space. Uh, there's a bunch of, like I said, different use cases, um, some that are uh, uh, pretty simplistic and then all the way up to trying to get to the point to where we're maybe uh, testing like evolved uh, mobile technologies and things like that. And so uh, for CI with the CNF testbed, there are some challenges as far as needing access to certain hardware resources and these types of things and trying to keep things in band and um, as far as a proper way for installing things with Kubernetes. And so there's, there's, um, there's plenty of challenges that, are, that uh, go along with that. So for networking, um, as far as like some of the challenges like deploying hardware, of course the provisioning, um, data plane technology such as VPP installation and then customizing those things so that other people can run the test bed in their environment. Um, these all have their own unique challenges. Um, as far as deploying hardware, you can think of different things, specific networking hardware that you might need for within our case, with these, these cases, we have things like um, uh, uh, smart NICs and uh, other types of uh, hardware there where you might need to do uh, some type of uh, a boot option or BIOS option or some changes like that. Um, so for deploying hardware, we're make, trying to uh, deploy everything in packet so we have a neutral um, environment. Um, we are using um, a, uh, a script that we uh, let me get here that we uh, that we created let me over here a bit. okay that we created in on the house uh, hardware hardware provisioning uh, sh um, it basically. Uh, is going to make sure that you, you know, it's customizable. You have your node structure that you want uh, to be able to set up for Kubernetes, um, the different the facilities and uh, the different other options like plans, node types, things like that for packet. And what it's going to do is output a, a list of, of nodes or IPs uh, when it's done doing the provisioning of the hardware. Then we, um, the next step is um, provisioning Kubernetes. We use KubeSpray and we have a wrapper around KubeSpray under the cross-cloud CI um, called um, 
Cascades Infra. And uh, this is going to, and again, it's a, another script that we have, a Kubernetes provisioning.sh. Um, you, when you, after you're done with that, it's going to output a uh, YAML file that KubeSpray can use intelligently. Um, so, let's see what else here. There's some options that you can change as far as release type for Kubernetes, so stable master, um, that type of thing. And then uh, something a little bit more specific to the networking domain, how is it that you're going to maybe configure some of the network specific things like the data plane. So um, most of our use cases are going to have VPP, which is a, a an open source data plane, um, and it's using that to configure vSwitch on the node itself. I believe it's still on the actual node, so this is going to be one of those things that might be out of band because um, you're configuring the node. Um, but uh, this ends up being something you end up needing for performance. So there's different options here, um, configuring the VLANs. Um, there's specific playbooks that you might use for doing the installation, but we have a specific one we use. And the output's going to be um, uh, that, uh, or actually an input could be another uh, specific cube config that you're using for your Kubernetes. Um, and then as far as if you're getting going on uh, trying to do some of this stuff on your own and you want to have more options, um, you can use the make file directly and then there's these options that we have here for um, firing off the different stages yourself manually. So if you end up wanting to um, maybe do some run some of your uh, networking functions and use the CNF testbed to do that, this is going to help you there. We have a packet generator um, that helps uh, generate all the packets and stuff like that for the for the tests and things like that. So some of that is more granular in this. So I think that's it. I'm out of time. Any questions? I think we're out of time. Does anyone have any questions? Say hi for the CNF test bed. Yeah, it's a good one, definitely. I'm looking forward to take a look at it and see, you know, if we can use it in all this networking testing in our projects for sure. Thank you. Great. Probably see more of this as the months go on and there's uh, more of the automation automated testing on the CNF testbed. All right, so the other topics um, will defer and hopefully we'll have um, more folks that'll reach out some talks for next month. Um, the next call is Tuesday, February 24th, 25th, sorry, at 12 p.m. Pacific time. Thanks for joining. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye -bye. Bye. Have a good day. Thank you, everyone. Have a good one, everybody. Take it easy.